So last video, I said we'd be going back to more hype releases, and here's one that's been making a splash recently, also playing in the ultra-competitive and ever-evolving $20 budget chi-fi segment that was kickstarted by the Moondrop Chu. So here we have the Tangsu Water. Uh, after the middling release of the Shim Li and of course the well-received but not spectacular Zishan Wu, the Wanner goes for the budget fi segment. Now this unit is provided by friend of the channel Rikurisu at a decent discount. Thanks for uh, making this happen, man. So I guess without further ado, let's get into a review of the Tangsu Wanner. Okay, going for a bit of a wide angle here to get the full box in. So here we have a very decently sized box. And if Moondrop appeals to weeaboos with the anime waifus on the packaging, Tang Tzu goes for the Chinese Emperor and Empress theme. This here is one Er. It certainly does look nice and stylish, so I quite like this. Of course, you also have Tang Tzu logos to the sides here. And uh, this marks our color choice. You can have any color you want as long as it's black. And some specifications on the back, as usual. Once we open up the box, we get a pretty nice inclusion. It is a little cloth piece of fabric with the one Earth picture printed on. It's a little low quality with this printing, yeah, but this is a lot more substantial than the usual anime waifu art card, so I'm all for this. It, uh, it also doubles as, I guess, a not so effective cleaning cloth too. And below that are the Tangsu Wanners stored in some cutouts. Now we have separate boxes for, of course, the accessories and the cable. So, you're getting four sizes of Akustoon AET-07s. Don't know how legal that is, you know, bootlegging Akustoon tips, but hey, free Akustoon tips. And of course, another three sizes of some of these more generic, just narrow bore ear tips. Quite a nice selection of ear tips for this kind of budget price, actually. So overall, we have a pretty nice value out of the boxing, you know. You know, you got some good ear tip choices and a cool cloth that I actually encourage other anime chi-fi brands to follow the example of. I kind of like this. Uh, I do lament the lack of a carrying case or pouch. And there are no instruction manuals, even if they are kind of superfluous. But for 20 bucks, I think you're getting your money's worth here. And here are the Tangsu Wanner. To be honest, I'm not at all impressed with the build. The plastic kind of reminds me of the stuff that um, KZ uses. And besides the kind of cool looking front plate with the black and gold theme, as you can see here, you can also get it in a white version. If you told me that KZ made this, I really wouldn't be surprised. This kind of construction, it's decently durable, but it, it certainly reveals its budget nature. Unlike the really cool, you know, golden painted metal of the Shimin Li. The nozzle is also similar to that of the Shimin Li. It's a plastic piece, but it is painted gold and compatible with a wide variety of ear tips. The fit of the water is perfectly average. It goes in my ears with little trouble, as long as you use a better cable than a stock one with its horrible memory wire. And it didn't irritate me much for longer sessions, though I did like the curves of the Shimin Li shell more than this one. Now you can use the Wanner for sleep, it's not the best or the worst at this, but you could find more comfortable offerings for sure. Otherwise, as you can see, the Wanner is using the same uh, QDC 2-pin style popularized by KZ. Which kind of leads us to the cable. And boy oh boy, it is a horrible cable. The braid is messy, kind of uneven. The memory ear hooks have this sort of very distinct bend that is not very moldable, so it'll have poor compatibility with like ears that don't fit this shape. It's average for microphonics and it tangles semi easily. The Y splitter here is made of sort of a semi transparent plastic with no chin slider. The jack is also plastic, and its strain relief kind of reminds me of KZ cables back in 2016. In general, ugh, it's a really bad cable. It doesn't sonically affect the Warner, but I really would recommend a cable change for the comfort and the aesthetics. So throughout my time with the Tangsu Warner, I found that my Ibeso DX160 was the best pairing for it. Certainly it didn't sound worse with other sources, but 
I think it sounded particularly slightly more dynamic with the DX160's output. As for ear tips, I'll be going with the medium size Akustum AET 07s that were included in the box. They do very job quite nicely and it's kind of become sort of the, the default go-to for me recently. So without further ado, let's get to the sound of the Tangsu One Er. The sound of the Tangsu One Er is something that I would describe as warm bassy. It's quite addicting actually and strikes me as quite energetic on initial listening. So starting with the bass. Bass texture on the Tangsu One Er is meaty and a little soft but not muddy. What I really like is that it's quick on its feet and the bass hits are very tactile and displaying an amount of bass definition that is not often seen in the $20 range. I like that the bass curve is well extended to include some mid bass as well. A tuning trend that has been somewhat neglected with the recent Multitude releases. It does bleed a little bit into the lower mid range, however, due to its fast response, it doesn't linger for too long and is generally quite clean while still delivering good impact. Truth be told, for 20 bucks, I have little complaints about this low end performance. If anything, I'm quite impressed with its technical ability. The lower mid range of the Warner is no longer semi neutral like the Sound Note Zero or the Mujop Chu that came before it, fully stepping into warm territory. And that makes it have a much more enveloping sound that plays well with most genres, thickening up some brighter tracks even if it rarely does bloat up some already warmly mastered music. Upper mids are a little less prominent due to the boosted bass curve, but is actually quite good at putting vocals at the center of the mid range without any excessive shoutiness. Although sometimes it, it can sound a little hollow. The separation of elements on these mids are really impressive, with elements really clashing with each other, and simultaneous details presented without fighting for space. The treble on the water doesn't hold any surprises, but it performs competently for the most part. Sometimes I feel like it was a little coarse and slightly hazy, but other times I feel like a little more clarity and air will have helped the overall sound. But otherwise, it gives the necessary edge and bite for instruments like electronic synths. Just don't expect it to do justice for classical pieces. The soundstage width of the Warner is a little more narrow than the average, perhaps due to the warmer tuning giving sort of a more enclosed feeling. Soundstage height and imaging is somewhat inconsistent. Uh, on some songs, I do hear some positional pacing and imaging of music elements, whilst for others, I would hear this usual non-existent kind of imaging, which is more the common weakness of budget releases like this one. So, depends on the song, basically. The Juan Ervo exhibits unusually good technical ability for a set at this price, at least in some metrics. I think Tangsu invested in a good driver and it really does show here. Don't get me wrong, the Warner is not a detail monster. It resolves about the same as other $20 sets. However, its macro detail separation is really something to behold. Being able to keep many simultaneous musical elements playing at the same time without them clashing or being blurred. This is a trait not even exhibited by many IEMs up until well into the $50 price range and its dynamic range is also quite decent. Props to Tangsu for having such strong separation performance in this class of chi-fi. I guess you could nitpick that it doesn't have much EQ headroom for the bass and treble, but I think you'll be quite pleased with its performance out of the box. Being positioned in the busy budget segment, the Warner is bound to butt heads with the Sound Note Zero. Both have roughly similar accessories, but the Warner does have more boutique box with the printed cloth. Build-wise, do you take the really cheap plastic of the Sound Note Zero with some metal on the front plate? Or do you take the equally unappealing KZ plastic of the Warner? Ideally, neither. Sound-wise, both have good bass performance, but bass definition is better on the Warner despite it being a little boosted. The lower mid-range of the Warner is warmer, whereas the Zero's is closer to neutral. Upper mid-range is where the Zero sounds a bit more tonally coherent than the Warner, 
uh, and both are equally unimpressive with treble performance. Technical ability is where I think the one or buries the zero. Whilst the sound notes offering can kind of choke in more complex mixes, which although I don't blame it, it's a budget IEM after all, but the one just outdoes it in this department, keeping details well displayed without smearing. I think for my money, I'll go with a one And of course, how could we forget the IEM that started this whole $20 price war, the Moodrop Chew? For unboxing, I will give a slight edge to the Chew with its anime waifu, the value of this includes spring tips, and an extra pouch, even if it's a bad one. Now build-wise, the Chew has the metal build, though that paint, I have heard, can still chip, whilst the one -er has removable cables, but must make do with a KZ plastic build. Sound-wise, the Chew's bass is relatively clean, as opposed to the one -er's much more bombastic approach. Lower mid-range on the Chew is also neutral leaning, but I do prefer the Wanner's take. The upper mid-range on the Wanner can be a bit hollow at times, whilst the Chew's suffers from a piercing sound with male vocals. So pick a poison here. Treble on both is meh, but the Chew's high seems to have a tiny bit more clarity. Technical ability is a closer race, with the Chew and Wanner being neck and neck, in most territories, but the Chu has a bit better imaging, whilst the water it shines with its again great separation abilities. As a personal choice, I would pick the water for the more fun sound, which appeals to me a bit more, but it doesn't completely dethrone the Chu, which still holds its own, though with that caveat of possible quality control issues which have yet to surface for the water. And the Chew is also getting a replacement soon, so it may be better to wait for the Lan as well. So after the middling release of the Shimin Lee and the decent but not groundbreaking Zeshan Wu, I didn't have such high hopes for the Wan Er. However, I am pleased to say that my expectations were well met and surpassed, as the Wan Er marries a warm, bass-focused sound with an unusually impressive separation ability to create a winner. <laughs> Shit wordplay, I know, bear with me. But if this is the caliber of IEMs that Tangxiu can consistently produce, then I think they really stand a serious chance at dethroning the current budget champs, leading the next wave of highly competitive but low price chai fi. And that is the end of uh, yet another review. As usual, I'll leave the links to the music I use in the description as well as links to my Patreon where you can support me so that I can actually have the funds to bring in more gear for review and all that. Uh, thanks to all my Patreon for my for your support. Uh, we're definitely going back to more hype releases, so expect some other hype release next weekend. Uh, but, you know, as usual, like the video if you like it comment if you have any suggestions any questions anything you'd like to share subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this kind of content and hit the bell button so that videos actually get delivered into your feed if nothing else then i thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next video this is Marion signing off